Shout, shout out, out good it's Shout sweet. out good it's all, all, right, right, all right, all right. All right, guys. All right, guys. What's up, gang? Long day of work, heading home, but it's an exciting day. I'm seeing Drake tonight at the Barclays Center. Don't know when this uh, interview is going to come out, but if there's one artist I know that's more talented, better looking, and more versatile than Drake, it's the artist you're about to see in the interview. None other than Spider Gang's MK Ultra. Um, he recently released a whole slew of music and went on a national tour. Um, albums include um, Divine Comedy, Theater of Cruelty, and he will be having another album coming out this year. Um, and just a super interesting interview. We talk about his past, him um, getting into Spider Gang, um, where that's all headed, the tour, um, and much, much more. So sit back, relax, and enjoy volume 10. Yes, we're on 10 volumes of interviews, volume 10, episode one with MK Ultra. Salute. What's up, good? It's gang. You know what we're about. We're bleeding the block for the best underground rap. We got a special treat right out of Alaska. This is why he looks this way. We got MK Ultra and the fucking house in the good hits compounds coming straight live to you from Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Let's start out simple. Let's start out simple, MK. How you doing, man? How you living? I'm feeling really good. It was just in Alaska. It was fucking. <laughs> Sick, playing bass for uh, Little Darky, and yeah. uh, got to meet Waka Flocka. He gave me some sage advice, uh, yeah. gave me the motivation to help quit cigarettes finally. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm feeling really good, especially after that. Like, talking to him, it was like definitely, uh, you know, I got a tour in two weeks. That gave me like a little bit of, more of a fire. Right, so, like, right. Yeah. How was the air up there versus in New York, oh, given the smoke hot bullets yeah, that no, recently I mean, happened? Yeah, I mean, just the air in New York is already like shit, but so it was definitely, I, I mean, I just like the mountains, I like nature, and so like, yeah, it was just the, it was cleaner yeah. air out there, it was just nicer. Where are you from originally? I'm from New Jersey. Okay. But, like, my parents live in Colorado right now, so, like, I'm used to, like, mountains You're and right. shit. Like, so, like, uh, yeah. I feel that. I feel that. Um, kind of just starting from the top, like, when did you kind of get into the music stuff? When did you kind of start taking it seriously? And how did you get into music? Were you in a band? Did you play an instrument? Did you start out rapping? Like, tell uh, us a little bit about so that. So, basically, I started, uh... Basically, my parents took me to see Pearl Jam when I was about nine or ten, and then I asked to play oh, guitar. Yes. And I think that I I was playing guitar for about a year, till like I think I remember there was like a moment where like I said like yeah this is what I want to do. So it's like I knew from a very early age that like I wanted to make music, and it's always shifted. Uh, when I was 16, I had a friend that um, who goes by the name Medicine Man that uh, that mm -hmm. I started producing with. He was like, "You should help me out because uh, you know music theory." And he got me into, funny enough, Waka Flocka, Flocka Valley, and yes. like Lex Luger production, and that's what I started. But it's always changed. But it's always been the same thing. It's always like I want to make a career off music. I want to make mm -hmm. art, and it's like kind of went on weird tangents like I wanted to be in a band but I had no one that uh, liked the same type of music as me Right. so I that's why I gravitated towards production because I could like make beats and then started no one wanted to rap on my beats so I started rapping and then it kind of like went in this weird thing to where you know maybe last year I was playing drums in a band in Europe with Lil with Darky. Darky right. So it's like I gave up on doing the band thing and then by going on this weird rabbit hole I ended up doing the thing that I wanted to do originally. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of uh, funny how that works. It is it is kind of crazy how you sort of just picked up the drums a little bit on the fly because you were originally like a strings player. Well, I, I did play drums for like two or three years when I was younger. Um, but, uh, I was not, uh, having to do it again, he was like, oh, you should play drums for this tour, because originally he started, it's funny, I was talking to, uh, Wendigo about this, you know, I was like, I, 
he was the one that got me back into playing guitar. Like, like Darky. He was like, mm-hmm. oh, you're good at guitar. Like, you're, you're like, you know what I mean? You should play that more. And then he was like, do you want to be on this Europe tour? And at first I thought I was going to play guitar with Wendigo, but he was like, we need a drummer. You're going to play drums. And I was like, well, okay. Well, now, now I have to learn this whole other instrument. Yeah. And it was super stressful because I, I tried to, like, play again. And it was, like, literally, like, obviously I knew some stuff, but it was kind of like starting from scratch. And so it's like, I, like, would, you know, I would practice i would take adderall and i would literally practice from <laughs> like 9 p.m till like the morning right like, i was like i was like working like i would i would practice like like anyone that was like there in like that area or like that time like from spider gang will tell you i would pl- play for like hours because i was so, like anything anytime that i know what i'm doing on stage i'm like super confident in like if i have to yell sometimes with like singing it's like i'll practice for hours like anything mm-hmm. that i'm not as comfortable with I'm, like, so, like, neurotic about it because it's, like, I can't fuck up. I can't fuck up. Like, I have to make sure this is, like, as good. So, it's, like, with drums, I was, like, super nervous, but I'm, like, glad that I did it because when we actually – I was practicing kind of, like, solo for months, and then, like, we had maybe, like, one rehearsal the day before – that we were supposed to leave, and I was like, oh, this the is the day be before you're supposed to leave to Europe. Yeah, we like we had That's one crazy. rehearsal with the whole band because Salsa wasn't there <laughs> till like the day before, and, I, and, we, were, and I, we were rehearsed all together, and I was like, oh, yeah, this is gonna be yeah. fun. What's your favorite instrument? Uh, I to play, obviously. I would say either guitar or like singing. Okay. I think uh, I had a guitar teacher that said um, guitar was one of the most expressive instruments. Because if you look at a piano, you can't bend the notes. Like in um, like a guitar player's the bending of vibrato, mm-hmm. there's so much um, like different types of like even in that like one bend, there's so many different ways that you can kind of bend the string. It is very like similar. Like stringed instruments, like violin and guitar, are almost like very similar to the human voice. And that's also why I like the human voice because it's like you know you hear voice actors that can completely like change the way their voice sounds, and uh, you know it's just like super flexible. I think the guitar is also like that as well, but like the voice even more so, which yeah. is why like I you know I want to you know constantly get better at that. How was going <laughs> on that Europe tour? Because I feel like it was like a big moment in. Sp- Obviously, like, Spider Gang history, yeah. but also, like, generally in underground because it's fairly rare for, like, more of, like, a niche alternative musician, which is kind of what I operate in, to have such a successful tour. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people in New York that are friends were looking at that footage, and I was throwing shows during that time, and we were just like, what the fuck? Yeah, I think that was an experience that definitely, like, changed my life. Yeah. Like, I'm super glad. I, I was super nervous before. Um, super just, like, manic about it. Like, not sure if I was capable of doing it. And, uh, you know, Darkie was the one that's like, no, you got this, you got this. And at first I was like, it's like, when I first started playing drums, he was just like, oh, you're going to be, you're, you're going to be, you're, you sound amazing. And I was like. No, I don't. <laughs> it's like, have you, have you heard a drummer before? And I was just like, I was just like so confused. But I think he like believed that I can do it. And just like when we were out there, it was like, again, um, saw some like really crazy shit. But also, you know, when you're on tour, you only see things for like a day. So it's kind of like seeing everything through a keyhole, you know? Right. And it kind of was an experience that one made me realize how little I know about the world and makes me want to like experience more and open myself up more. And two is an experience that said, yo, if you, if you want to do something and you just say you're going to do it, it, you can, you're capable of doing it. If Mm -hmm. you like work hard enough, like if you, if you say you're going to do it and you just do it, then like, he like, he, he kind of proved like, I don't know, in a way, like he kind of motivated me in a lot of other ways. And it's like, you know, that's why I was like, okay, well, if I could do that, if I could go from, like, not knowing how to play drums at all to basically doing right. this tour that is, like, super massive, then, like, what else can I, like, do? Right, right. So, it, it was, it kind of just, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it just, like, super inspired me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's and, an inspiring guy. And kind of, like, going off the tour thing, I feel like spider gang as a collective and we'll talk about like the history of it and the the fate of it later but like also also it's like you guys really are known for your live performances like i remember the monarch show the brooklyn monarch for people who don't know what it is a venue in brooklyn you know you kind of like people are switching on and off stage like someone's doing one song here another person's doing one song here it's like you really 
go into the show and it's like the whole collective is performing which is different than a lot of rap shows where it's like band one comes up and yeah, then yeah, band yeah. two comes up I, I think that we did, uh, the first spider gang tour like the the monarch show that you saw that was like this spider gang 2 which i think spider we had gang two. we yes. had that approach i think we had like multiple different approaches i think you know like the first spider gang tour it was like that was at gramercy theater yeah, it was like one artist, one artist, one mm -hmm. artist, one artist, one artist. That's and then we true. did like sets with all of us together. And then we did the gang songs. But I think the Spider Gang 2, we kind of tried to like, okay, these two artists, then this artist, then the song with three artists. Like it was much more like all over the place, which I, I like that approach better. But we're also like very disorganized. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's just like, I always say it's like, uh, Spider Gang was like beautiful chaos because we're so many different right. types of people so many different styles and that's what makes it really cool I was talking to Troy about this um, mm -hmm. how the the only time we only did this like twice the first Spider Gang show that we were all together at Los Globos in LA we were on stage all of us all the time we right. never did that ever again and like we did we tried it in Dallas like the next did you tour. like doing that? The second time, no, it didn't feel right because I think the the Los Globos one, we were it was so crazy that and so unexpected. Like people, we were going through stage and we had to go to the crowd. People like trying to grab at us because like they hadn't. That was the first time we were ever all together. So it was a really like insane experience. But the second time, I think we were like so hype off that there were certain things that I think that we that we had to like learn. Like for me, it was like. Everyone was on stage all the time, but, like, fans would try and, like, get us to sign shit. And, like, I didn't think about it till afterwards, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'll sign your shit. But then I was like, wait, what I'm doing is taking away from this other person. Oh, and it, it was more yeah. like, it was more like we started getting, like, a little, and I think we kind of, like, got out of it very quickly. But there was, like, a moment where I was like, yo, if, uh, like, I need to focus. Like, if I'm on stage, I better be doing something, whether I'm hyping up the crowd. You gotta go or doing quick. Something. Yeah. You know, th there's, like, a lot of things that I, like, I think, um, you know, Spider Gang shows help me with, like, crowd control mm -hmm. and, like, what to Definitely. do. Like, yeah. if one person's on this side, you gotta be on this side hyping the people up. Or it's like, you don't have to have a microphone. You don't have to, like, sing their words. But if you know the words to their songs and you lip sync it, and then the people that know are encouraged to like say mm -hmm. it, you know what I mean? There, there are certain things that you can do to almost like back up right. what they're doing. Like if they're always on this side, you got to go to this side kind of thing. And so like that's the thing I, I learned, especially yeah. Spider Gang 2 when we did it more like chaotically, like all of us all together. What was, what's the top city you've performed in out of both Denver. of those tours? Denver? Denver, always Denver. Yeah, yeah, Denver, yeah. and I love Seattle. Seattle is the most violent. Seattle is, is always uh, this was the first Spider Gang tour I remember uh, there's a funny story where uh, that was the tour that John was on and uh, he had this song that I produced called God is Being Raped mm -hmm. and uh, I uh, I forgot that I produced it or like I helped produce it and he started playing this new song I was like what's this new John song I was like I want to check it out and I was like oh shit I produced this and then I just like ran into the crowd and ran into the pit and it was like the pits at like Spider Gang shows are like cool but a lot of them are like that especially that first one that was like their first concert ever so they're still learning how to pit like throw down oh yeah the crowd but the yeah seattle like they knew how to fucking throw down and that was like i got into that pit for that john song and it was like people were like throwing me like it was like like just like this big fucking fat guy just being like shaking me <laughs> like i was like yeah this is fucking awesome <laughs> no that is amazing <laughs> You kind of got into Spider Gang a bit later. Like, why don't you tell us about like that process, like how that first went down? Um, how did you hear about Spider Gang? You oh, know, well, I heard about Darky first. I think. I, well, actually, funny enough, I heard about John first. I heard about John Askus, mm -hmm. and I, I was like, "Oh, this is super weird." And then I remember <laughs> hearing, and I, I liked it because I like I like weirder shit. And then uh, I heard Darky. I think the the first song I heard was like Big Wave, yeah. and I really was uh i was like yeah this is crazy this is just like so many different genres and then uh uh then uh i just like you know still listening to him a lot and uh i think i was in school at the time in boston and then i went back home and uh i had a show with wendigo and dillinger oh, in the backyard in okay. a backyard in new york actually a little poof uh it was something like that Inez, shout out shout out, so so i think i think it was him i definitely like i i played 
some shows that were to all of us together. But it was yeah. this one backyard show, and uh, they played. It was super lit. And then uh, I played, and I was at the time I was wearing like a green. Wait, morph was suit. this at the Living Gallery? You no, think this okay. was one before that? Okay. I, I, met, I met them like one time. We had one show before that, and uh, they just really like fucked with me. And then uh, I started hanging out with them more, and um, like I remember, like one I fuck with Dillinger's music a lot, mm-hmm. and then and then like I thought it was super hard, and then also I think one thing that I realized I had so much in common with uh, Wendigo because we would play guitar together, we jammed, and a lot of the my favorite influences he actually like knows like Anthrax was this thrash metal band that I was such a big fan of that mm-hmm. I knew no one knew and, uh, yeah. yeah but um so there are like certain connections mm-hmm. uh that uh that like we had that I was like oh we actually have a lot of common and then I think uh ultimately it led to a um uh, there was a show that was at the Living Gallery that they asked that I was on the bill and it was like a couple artists it was like Jay Charm and there was me and then it was the rest of Spider Gang Right. and I think that day they asked me if I wanted to join the group and at the time I wasn't sure uh, I was in other groups before and I never really I always kind of felt like an outsider I always kind of felt like the weird one and I didn't really like fit in I was like mm-hmm. maybe I should just be solo and I was like I still wanted to work with all of them because I really liked them but I wasn't sure at first and then uh, they were like, yeah, just think about it. And then we did the show, and I was just like, yo, yeah, no. If I was ever going to be in ev- any group, and I don't know how long this is going to last. I, I kind of honestly knew that from the beginning, that this is something that is super special, will probably only last for a, a short period of time because it's so chaotic and wild, but it's going to be something that I feel is important. Right. And that I want to be a part of this like right now. Um, and that's kind of like how I how felt it, about it. Is that is that like yo? If I was ever gonna be in any collective, because it was like I wanted to do all different kinds of genres, and like uh, you know, you had Flacco and Eddie would have like fucking like they had this one song called Anarchy, which was like a noise song, and then you'd have like Darky playing songs that are just like him and guitar with Wendigo. Like I, I heard mm-hmm. Darky have like country songs before. Like yeah. Dillinger, you know, would like drop a random blue string. He Dillinger literally has a sea shanty. Like you know what I mean? Like it's like <laughs> there's no. It's like we get billed as like a rap collective. I always thought we were like a post genre collective. Like there yeah. is no genre to Spider Gang. Like yes. Like and like even like Darky. Like I feel like people pin him as like. Oh, like the Holocaust or genocide. I think he's like I don't see him as a, an artist that has any genre. Right. Like so, like that's why I wanted to join it. Is like, oh, this is a, like a post genre collective. Like this does there is no sound. So that's why I felt it gave me the freedom. Like I can do whatever the fuck I want. What I feel like that's a good segue to talking about your individual music and body of work. Like you mentioned, Spider Gang being a post genre collective. Where we, where do you kind of put yourself in any one bucket? Would you define yourself as a rapper or I would, just I would as say, an artist? I would say I, I've thought about this recently because more and more people ask me like, "Oh, what kind of music do you make?" And I'm like, "Oh, well, this is, it's getting harder and harder to answer that question." So my my answer to that was I would say either post genre, which is just like. You know, it's uh, like I, I, I don't. It's not like oh, we want to be a band. Let's be a rock band or let's be a hardcore band. It's like I can make a hardcore song or I can make a pop song or I can have an album that's all one style of music or an album that is all like I can have an album that's all guitars or an album that's no guitars kind of thing. Yeah, and, it, yeah. and it's like there are artists that have done that before. I feel like it's just never been like there's not like a name to it mm-hmm. which is also kind of the point like i feel like it, that's that's kind of like the ironic thing about calling yourself post genre is that oh i'm saying i don't have a genre so i'm creating this label and eventually that's <laughs> going to post genre is going to be a genre but i also like uh, i think the way i think about it too is i consider myself like not like a rapper but like a hip hop artist yeah because i remember um going to this like lecture with the 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 guys behind like run dmc and i remember them talking about Mm -hmm. what they thought hip-hop was and they said it's not they don't see it as a genre they saw it as like a filter where you take all these other genres you could take jazz or funk or rock and turn it into something else which combines all of them so it's almost like you know you listen to like early public enemy bomb squad production it's like a collage 
uh, of like different kinds of music. Yeah. So that's like yeah, that's yeah, always yeah. how I thought about it. Is like when I made Meat Man, that's like a metal album, but I thought I went about right. it in a super hip hop mindset. Right. You know what I mean? Or like my last album, Divine Comedy was a rock album technically it sounds like it but i was super influenced by like jay dilla like there mm-hmm. are moments where i have like almost like you know like there's like 30 second songs and, and stuff like that and like you know like samples and stuff like that or like interpolating melodies like almost like i'm sampling the melodies like from like earlier songs of my childhood you so right. it's like th- it's a quote unquote sounds like a rock album but i think it's like a very like hip-hop mindset even mm-hmm. though i'm not rapping so it's like I think that that's like kind of also another way I think about yeah, it. Yeah, it, you have albums like Meat Man and Green Guy, and then you have, you know, Divine Comedy, most recently, where it's like, there's some songs on there that are doing really well, they're almost like pop songs, yeah. and it's a total, totally different sounds, and did you, do you kind of have a favorite album or a favorite project you've Theater released? Cruelty. Theater of Cruelty. That's okay. my favorite one. Um, Twenty twenty. But because that, I think yeah. that that one. I think I have. I think I've thought about this too. I have like two types of albums. I have like the album where I'm going like one kind of sound or one idea. Like oh, it's like Meat Man. It's a metal album, but there's all different kinds of metal. There's like new metal. There's black metal. So it is one sound, but there's a million different variations of the sound. So it's like I limit myself. And then I have albums where, fuck it, I'm just going to do everything. That was like Theater of Cruelty, where it's like, oh, it's like I took all the things. Like, Meat Man was like practice. Green Guy was practice for when I did a Theater of Cruelty album. Like, I sometimes find when I limit myself, it's a lot more challenging. Theater of Cruelty was just like this like totally like freeing thing where it's like I'm just like throwing whatever at the wall and it somehow came out like, like my favorite thing. And, uh... Uh... Yeah, so like right now I'm kind of going through like another one of those cycles where it's like, okay, I'm Divine Comedy is kind of like a rock album. Like I'm working mm-hmm. on an album that is much more electronic based, but there's like rap on it and there's like drum and bass and, and, and a lot of different like forms of just like pure electronic music. And then I have another album planned that I kind of want to take both of those albums and almost like combine the approach, which is just like everything so. is is it gonna be like a two album year for you or are you gonna drop uh, another I, I album i want to try year? for three but the, the 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 second one is almost finished i'm trying to finish it before tour trying to get features right so if you're an artist <laughs> that that's my friend that is supposed to get on the yeah. album get it do it yeah but uh <clears throat> But yeah, I'm trying to get that one finished. But also the third one, I know I'm not going to go too deep into that one, but I know exactly what I want to do for it. I know what it's called, and I know how I want to approach it. And I feel like that one, it's either going to be an album that I do super quickly, or it's going to be like super, it's going to take time. Like, I don't know how it's going to be. What was the one, and I'm not going to reveal like how it sounded or anything, but what was the music unreleased that you were showing me last time we hung out? That was that was Human in the Machine. So that's the album. The I, upcoming one. Yeah, that's the one I want. Yes. It's either going to come, I think it's more realistically September, because <clears throat> I go on tour in July, and it's like, I still have a bit more work to do on it. But I would say it's like 80% done. And so like that one is like, that one's the next one that, uh, I had a friend tell me that he thought that that was like <clears throat> my favorite stuff that I've done. So it's I like, agree. I, I, feel like I, I think that's I right. I think there are from people that are going to really like this one because some of it is new sounds. Some of it is almost like a return to form. Like I've, I'm rapping more than I have in a while. And uh, I don't know. Again, it's not, uh, this album, there's no, there's, I don't think there's any guitar on it. There's no guitar. So it's like, there might be one song with guitar, but it's basically the complete opposite of my last record, which was like supposed to be super natural sounding and super nostalgic. This one is supposed to be super electronic, futuristic, yes, dark, yes. Uh, sinister. Because I was getting tired of go- writing love songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just like, man, I, I want to be, I want to be deranged again. <laughs> um, any, any special features on it? Anything you could tease out on it, or is it all under wraps right now? Uh, I want to keep it under wraps right now, but I have a lot of my friends on it. Nice. And then some other people, so. Nice. 
What's your kind of like favorite thing to do musically? Do you like rapping more? Do you like melodizing and I like, like singing I like more? Si I, I mean, it depends. I'm just like, I'm kind of just like an ADD person where it's like, if I do one thing too much, I just want to do the opposite. Like, it's like, I was always like that. Even when I was just into like rock music and metal music, when I started playing guitar, I was like, I want to start a band, even though I had no one to be in the band with. So I would spend like two or three weeks being like really into sludge metal. And then I would get like really into black metal and I would only be writing black metal riffs. But I was like in that period, I was like, oh, you have to pick one style and just be that band. So I think I've always kind of been like that, that if I do one thing too much, like that's why this new album has like more rapping on it is because I was like, oh, I'm getting tired of like writing like pop songs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not really, but like there's some songs on it that are more melodic, but I'm just like... Yeah, I just did this too much. Yeah, I just uh, it's like it's like it's fun. It's fun. Like I I don't know. I just like switch it up. Yeah, it's just yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's like I'm too ADD. Like I just like I can't do the same thing too much. Yeah, yeah. So running to like the last few questions, I feel like MK, you're somebody that's kind of known for your live performances. Yeah, the you know the the whole pageantry of it. What's kind of influenced your live performances, or is there no influence? Is it organic? I'm talking about everything the makeup, the way you control your body, um, jumping into the crowd. Like, just the way you are animated on stage is a bit different, that I would say, than anybody else in Spider Gang and many, most artists I've seen. Oh, I would say everything that I do comes from something else. Like, I'm not like a super internal person. I would say, like, I, I think about art in sort of like a collage like way. Like, I take this from that and this from that. Like, I think, like, David Bowie is a big influence, but also, um, you know, weird shit. Like I was really into this thing called Butoh, which is a form of like a Japanese theater where if you ever seen like the movie, the grudge where the, yes. there's like the kid that paints himself all white that comes from Butoh. It's like a, it's or like even a, the way you move on stage with it, like the kind of like, yeah. I don't know how to explain it's, it's, it, but yeah, it's basically like they would paint themselves all white and, um, some of the like exercises, are um like it's a very like it's called the dance of darkness like one of the exercises that we had was you essentially pretend you're like a puppet and you're like this and then the teacher tells you like raise your finger and so you have to do things very slowly so it's the idea of being in control and out of control at the same time like there's another uh uh exercise where you pretend like you are a dead body and bugs are crawling through your eyes and so you have to be like it, which you do on stage yeah so like that that's like that's like uh, the meat man stuff was super influenced by like buto and like it also helped me um a lot of it, it i was just kind of like it was like fucked up mime work that's that's the way yes. I, like i describe it and i think that that influenced me because it's super slow and it's really getting you to like feel what's in your body and like think about things in like a super abstract way so that's like one influence i wasn't like i took classes in that that's like one thing but also you know like punk and hardcore and like i'm a big like prince fan you know yeah. what i mean it's just like what like i just like it's hard for me to like like say like this comes from this or this comes from this because it's like i just am listening to so many different things i'm like constantly researching so it's like there's a piece of like a lot of different things in like everything mm -hmm. i do mm -hmm. i'm glad i asked that it's actually really interesting um top song top song you've released i mean it's if you, like, you got uh, you got if you could only choose one gun to head i think maybe uh uh, City of Fallen Angels, either okay. like either City okay. of Fallen That's Angels or one. In a Rut, because both of those are just like, oh, this is everything that I can do. Yes. Like, both of those songs are like the best accurate representation of like, in one song. it's a pop song, it has electronic shit in it, both of them have growling vocals, but also singing vocals, and, uh, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. like, City of Fallen Angels, there's disco in it, there's metal in it, there's R&B in it. Like the, the you know there's there's like classic rock and rock shit you know mm -hmm. what I mean alt, alt rock shit in it so it's like oh that's like that's everything I can do in one song like if right. I was gonna show you one song like just show you what I can do that that would be probably it right right most underrated artist or trend in music most underrated artist or trend in music put us on who do we need to tap into. I need to think about that one. 
She's an underrated artist. The next question is going to be the most overrated oh, trend you know, you're seeing you know, in you know, music. You know what? Uh, can I pick a new artist? Yes. If you're at I home, think I know you're gonna check, say. check out Ricky Basco. I knew you were going to fucking check say that, Ricky bro. Because people don't know how talented this dude is. <laughs> like, this dude, one, he has crazy bars, makes all of his own beats, and on, like, a bunch of songs, he's, like, doing piano <laughs> solos. So it's like, so good. like, and like his songs have like hella blues influence and like R and B influence, so and like gospel influence. I'm like, yeah, this dude, I want to, I want to work with this dude. He's gonna be on my Atlanta show. I'm pretty sure. So it's like, I, 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 I fuck with him. He's, 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 he's like, he's not underrated because he's like old. I feel like he's just like hasn't people haven't like caught up to him yet. Right. I think he's, I think he's gonna be super right. lit. What do you think is the most overrated trend in music? The most overrated trend. It's kind of a tough question. The <laughs> most overrated trend in music. Um, I was. I, I usually I just, ask most overrated artists in music, but I know you're. Uh, most artists are like, I don't want to like talk shit, so yeah, I'm not going to ask yeah. you that. I mean, I, I think like an overrated trend. In like, what music. are you listening to a lot of where you're like, I don't, I just, I don't, I'm not into it. I don't know. I, I find it very difficult for me to... Like, obviously, there's shit that, like, I don't vibe with. But, like, you know, even, like... Even, like, bad music, I sometimes kind of like. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's this one Post Malone song where it's, like, the cover of, like, a Hootie and the Blowfish thing where he has this, like... Where it's, it's like, the one for, like... You ever see that, like, 3D animated, like, Pokemon thing where it's, like, Post Malone and there, he has, like, a line about, like... I am a cowboy. I cry when I see a baby or something <laughs> like that. It's, like... It's, like... I was just, like, this is, like, really... Like hilarious. Like I, don't, <laughs> I like I don't hate. Like I don't hate this as much. I feel like I, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really like hate shit as much. I because I I'll, I'll make fun of something sometimes, but like I don't know if I really. I don't really like. I guess I get angry more at like trends. Like I I find that like I think nowadays a lot of people like music seems like kind of more disposable and like because of like the tiktok generation like mm -hmm. anyone could like people that just like make shit because they know there's gonna be uh like a trend you know like a trend on it i guess like yeah. sometimes yeah uh and and you know i i feel like you know sometimes i like just like a pop song about like you know, just like something really simple as long mm -hmm. as it's like done in a right way. So it's like, you know, I mean, I like everything from like Ariana Grande to just like fucking death battle. I feel to that. Like, I'm so it's like, I, I don't, there, there's not too much that like angers me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Fair like, enough. like Fair I, I guess I, I've seen movies where I walk out like pissed, but that's very <laughs> rare. True. True. Um, mo dream feature. Any feature, I'm, a hypothetical situation, I'm your A&R, and I'm like, unlimited budget, dream feature, you could get anyone in the world. Uh, either feature or just to work with them in the studio, yeah, I would fair. say either Aphex Twin. Interesting, or, okay. Or, or, or JPEG Mafia, because I remember, he, he actually, it's it, like... I think he means a lot to me because I actually remember there was a point where I saw that like he had like six hundred followers, <laughs> like it was like before of he was course really. Of course, MK likes JPEG Mafia. Why yeah. wouldn't I put two and two together? Well, yeah. well, I saw him on like the Veteran Tour. He was like opening for uh, Milo, who's now rap for Area or or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I remember seeing him on that tour when nobody knew who he was, and uh, I literally watched him just like blow up so like fast like from you know like and that was kind of just crazy to see because here's this guy that is super influenced by like noise and industrial and even his older albums are way like he found a way to take the weird shit and make it like palatable for like a wider audience but his music was really fucking weird it still is really weird yeah. music um to be as big as he is so he's like he was kind of like a big motivator for me it's like oh if he can find a way to take complex ideas and make them simple then like i can do that yeah so it's yeah, like yeah. i don't want to be him that's like that's the thing and there are a lot of artists that i like that uh and i was talking darky about this it's like i can you it's like there's certain artists that you can never be like you can never be an apex twin you can never be a jpeg mafia you can never be a little darky yeah. but they're the type of people that 
inspire you to be yourself. Yes. Like if they're this weird and they're like making it work for like like the masses, then like you can like find ways to take your weirdness and mm-hmm. shape it in a way that people can understand. Yeah. No, JPEG Mafia definitely did that. Wider audience, wider audience for sure, for sure. Let's get into these Reddit questions, MK, and then I have one final question for you All after right. this. We got two of the same questions, one from Flokoaka1 and Healthy Impress1562. Okay. Favorite meat. And then the other question is, how delicious is the meat men's market? Uh, 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 well, so I, you know what? When I was in Alaska, I tried reindeer. That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, it I is. Like, I like, it is. Reindeer yeah, is yeah, actually reindeer good. Reindeer was pretty fucking good. I don't know, man. Just beef. <laughs> just like, you know, just give me a fucking burger. I love I love meat. Yeah, like, and how delicious is a meat man's market? We're going to assume quite delicious. Yeah, um, very, very delicious. I don't I don't even know if that's a reference to something. I don't I, either. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know, know what that man. means. I, I thought that, you might know. No, bro, I don't know shit, bro. <laughs> uh, Opin- this is from Batman5667. Opinions on insects. Oh, I love... I Actually, I love insects. I'm really fascinated by ants because nice. ants... Will um, they fight wars that like span continents, mm-hmm. and uh, they have like complex agricultural societies? Like sometimes they, they have like they, right. they like milk aphids. So I kind of see them as like they're just kind of like people on a smaller level. <laughs> so when I look at an ant, I'm like maybe there's like I shouldn't step on this guy because maybe there's like some giant thing that also is kind of similar to humans that's like looking over us mm-hmm. that could squash me at any moment. So the, uh, that the ants, and I was just like I don't know I like insects I, I'm fascinated oh, yes. by them. Support that. We got C Wazor saying, "How did you come up with the design of your character?" I I think the better question is how you come up with the designs of like your characters in general because I don't know if there's like one set character, but I that's mean a like it's it's kind of like again it's kind of just like inspiration from like a lot of different like fields like you know. Uh, Green guy, it was like a jumping off point. Like it started as just like, oh, I want to make an alien character, and I was just like, well, I'll take a green suit and paint my face green. And then it was like, oh, well, let's go like thrift shopping. And it's like, what fits with this? It's like there's like a long flowing dress and stuff like that or whatever. And then like Meat Man was like, okay, well, what's the opposite of Green Guy? If like Green Guy is like this alien character that's like coming from like another dimension, well, he would be like fucking the satanic version of that where it's like. It's much more metal. It's like the Judas Priest, like bondage gear, shit like that. Like it's just like the opposite. So that was like a jumping off point. And those two were like I'm really influenced by mythology. So it's just like my like weird fucked up mythology. And then like mm-hmm. the trickster shit, like the um, the jester character, again was just like you know kind of. I mean, influenced by mythology as well. Like, I'm really interested in, like, the trickster yeah. mythology and, like, stories about, like, jesters and whatnot. So it's, like, um, and, you know, like, like, like Loki and stuff like that. And, like, I, I, was, I read this book that was really uh, talking about, I think it was called The Trickster Makes the World. Uh, and uh, it went into all these different stories. Mm-hmm. And so that, um, but I will say that for a lot of my stuff in the past was kind of, like, me finding things and just, like, kind of, like, pasting them together Mm -hmm. like you know the fucking the theater cruelty costume is literally a costume you could buy at a store yeah and i think that's a good plug to check out your visuals because your visuals are true cinema and i think set you apart from a lot of um artists nowadays so definitely check those out whether you're talking about the the theater but yeah like recently i've had more like oh i'm having someone do a costume for it which is like why like i feel like my visual game has like stepped up because it's like oh like being yourself like the video or like the the costume for that was like made by someone mm-hmm. you know what i mean as opposed I to remember like, that. Yeah. like so definitely yeah, yeah what prestigious look 3800 what song in the divine comedy has the most meaning to you um i would say either flies in my bedroom or wabi sabi i think like flies in my bedroom is like my song. favorite Song because it has like my favorite lyrics on the album, but I think Wabi Sabi to me is like that album kind of came out of a time when the fate of Spider Gang I wasn't sure about and I wasn't sure about a lot of things. I was going through a breakup at the time and it was like mm-hmm. that was like the first relationship that I ever um, was like yeah. really really interested in in, in mm-hmm. someone like really like in love and I think that uh, again a lot of things were falling apart. So that was uh, the song 
that I kind of like I don't even think it's the best song on the album that was just the song that I had to write to just basically be like yeah just keep going it's good like that was a song that was, a, that was my therapy song where it's just like it's gonna be fine just focus on right now every time you've ever fucked up in your life it's led to something good so yeah. it's like that's yeah. that's what that song is about is like not being afraid to like fall flat on your face yeah because like like every time I've made a mistake or like I don't know like I, I always say this whenever you get to a point in your life that you are happy or you're content or you've done something that you're proud of you only got to that moment not because of all the positive things but also all the negative things right. so you have to be thankful for the negative things as well because true. that also makes you who you true, are true man I'm a promoter so I, there's a lot of negativity yeah it's, it's <laughs> every show yeah. <laughs> Um, last couple of Reddit questions, and then we'll get to the final question. Kind of similar two questions. I tune I. Uh, your favorite genre of music personally, and what's next for Mr. Ultra? And then the other question from Zy Coatley. What genre will the next project be? You kind of already answered all three yeah, of those. Yeah, the, the next project is going to be Human in the Machine. It's yeah. going to be... Uh, again, it's not like one genre, but it's more like a flavor. Like that's kind of like my last album too. I almost saw it as like the the genre. It was like a color palette where it's like, oh, it's more like nostalgic vibes. It's more like music that I listened to growing up, but it's like a lot of different shades of that. My new album is much more electronic, weird, dark, uh, but it's not one genre of electronic music. Mm -hmm. There's like rap shit on it. There's like you know like techno on it. There's like drum and bass on it. Yeah. So that, and then I have a, so that's called Human in the Machine, and I'm not going to give away the third one, um, but uh, I know what I want to call it. Soon to come. Soon yeah. to come. Um, all right, man, let's get to this final question. A lot of people have been wondering, and I think I'm the first, like, interviewer blogger dude that's actually had, like... A full-length interview with any spider gang member since like late 2022 or maybe yeah. one of the first ones to maybe ask this question so you guys had this album 2022 it's a group album it's called spider gang is over mm -hmm. what did that kind of mean there was been a lot of social media chatter after that from spider gang members and from fans over what does it mean for the collective is it truly over why are all these guys still touring together and making music together what the hell is going on we still see the instagram being used we still see the youtube channel being used what is going on is spider gang really over is it not well, does it even fucking matter well I'll, I'll say this i'll say two things one i don't even know <laughs> that is fair but like two i i think i think if i could give a more uh, a, a better answer to that I would say there was a lot to keep 16 people on the same page to do tours together to work on an album together like that summer I had the Darker Europe tour which was just like a, a bunch of us it wasn't all the members of Spider Gang but there was one tour then we had to work on the album in July that we all got done in a month and then we had the another tour. tour and the summer before that we had another tour and we were doing shows in between so it's a lot to have this thing that people know and like you know, I think that we like we were kind of getting on each other's nerves for a little bit. I think we had to like take a step back and like also just have it be fun again and not think about this name. So it's like it's almost like ending it, like it's over. So we could say now we could just do whatever the fuck we want. There's not this pressure on it, and it's like, I mean, I don't even really know if we'll ever do another album. I don't even yeah. know if we'll ever do another tour. Um, but yeah. I know, I know, I don't know. I have no fucking clue. That's a really good answer. Yeah, I actually I, didn't expect that because yeah. it, it, it to me it's like I hang out with you guys all the time and that's a vibe. It's like yeah, no one no, knows. That, no matter what, there every single person and like I've talked to that. Like if any one of us gets married, we're all there. Yeah, we're yeah. all like, they're my family at this point. We've been through too much shit to like, and it's like your family. Your family will piss you off every once in a while. Exactly. They're still they're still, they're still my family. Exactly. And like every single member, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. Whether they were in, like, John, Teenage, if they were in Spider Gang at any point, they're still my family. Yep. And so that's how it's always going to be. It's not yep. going to change. Yep. That was good. That was good, and I totally agree with that. I think people, like, forget sometimes that, like, you guys are real human beings actually hang out with each other and talk yep. to each other all the time. And we're, we're human <laughs> beings that are just flawed and just people like anybody else. Yep. Yep. All right, man. Final question's kind of open mic. Uh... I, w I usually ask at this point, like, what's next for you musically, but I kind of think we already cover that. Yeah. So just open mic, man. Any shout outs, anything you want to say? Shout out to Waka Flocka. Fair enough. Shout Fair out enough. to Waka Flocka Flame. If you, uh, yeah, that, that was, that was, uh, that gave me, uh, 
Yeah, that was that was a really beautiful experience. I agree, dude. Shout out Waka Flocka. Shout Waka out Brick Flocka. Squad. Like for real, I grew up with him. That dude's, <laughs> that dude's sharp as attack, and he makes great music, and he's awesome. Um, all right, guys, that's it from us. Salute over and out. We got MK in the house, coming straight out of Williamsburg. Thank you, guys. I